So, we have once again returned to actually cover the most current episode of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, which is episode 6, I believe. And yeah, episode 5 was most certainly fucked up. It was fucked up beyond belief. It was, um... It was a depressing episode because you saw the slow descent of Geto's character, the slow and made very, very real descent. And it was one of those things that it all kind of, it clicked in a way. Everything kind of clicked, actually kind of tell us in a very subtle way why he went the way he did. And with the way he went, it, you kind of, it, it was, it, don't get me wrong, it's not, it's, it, I wouldn't ever justify any actions a character does any, any characters does at the cut. <laughs> God, the heat's getting to my head. What I'm trying to say is, I'm not going to say, okay, well, this is that and that is this. But what I want to say was, what it does tell us, it tells us the the why of the entire scene, if you get, if you get what I mean. It tells us the why of everything. And that's what the most important fa factor is into the whole entire episode. If you don't have the why, you kind of then just get a person going, well, I'm now evil. And it kind of feels a little bit like, you know... Why am, I, why am I doing this? Why am I watching this? If I can just watch something better. But the way that the episode portrayed Geto slowly descending into the darkness, it all kind of makes sense. He just cracked, in a way. He, he completely cracked, and it was one of those things that you saw the reason why, and it was one of the, uh, it's the ugliness of the world. And it's depressing, because again, there is this sense that there could have been more. It just could have been more to him, but then, or more with him with Gojo, but then that entire last event with Gojo, I guess, kind of proved to, proved to him that there was no turning back in a way. Like, get, get or realizing maybe at that point there was no turning back. He realized there was nothing left here for him, because even that whole entire event with Gojo didn't really do anything. And yeah, I must say, depressing. Depressing, no less. But I guess I can't wait to see what this show does do now. Put my window up slightly so I actually can see everything. So anyways, let's actually, actually get the show on the road. Let's start this thing in three, two, one. Let's start this thing absolutely now. There is no sound, I realize that. Hold on a second. Why <laughs> is there no sound? Why did it turn the sound off? Right. Give me a second, sorry. It was being, it was being, it was being weird. Right, so this thing in three, two, one. It's this thing absolutely now. I think the reason why is because, um, I think the reason why is because there was no, there was no dub to it, so it defaults to English because I changed it to Japanese. It doesn't know to then default to Japanese for some reason. I don't know why. Computers basically makes no sense. <laughs> Damn, the re evolution of hu human earthworm as a film series is quite drastic. I thought it was going to be some like random re reference to like human centipede or something. I didn't think it would go that far. <laughs> I 
I don't know. I I I, I, I kind of feel like I'd want to see that film just to see how it concludes. It's one of those things. I'm like, I kind of need to see how that concludes. Damn, they should, we should we should all like do like major events and major like conversations over over a game of table tennis to be honest <laughs> It's very true. You can't actually hate Toto at all. I feel like he's one of those guys that he's just, it's impossible to hate him. Oh, the new opening. <laughs> I know I talked about subtlety last uh, stream about how this episode, how the episode prior was very subtle. This opening is not very subtle at all. <laughs> I just, I was watching, I was like, wow. I do appreciate the idea that it, they just, they just they threw everything at it. And it's sort of one of those things that you don't pick up on it unless you know, or unless you unless you go back and watch it again. Once the once your series is over, opening's really good though. I do really like it. But there was one shot. In this, there's one shot specifically in this in his opening that's just like, wow, do you really go that far? <laughs> It's not, it's not, it's not fun. I was like, man, that's, that, that's not nice. I feel like people would know what shot I'm talking about as well. It just literally just happened. What I also liked about the opening as well, which is what I kind of liked, is the idea of actually how season one was about uh, Gojo lifting up his mask. Or his eye mask, I should say, really. But this opening has him putting the glasses, uh, put the glasses down, putting the mask down to cover his eyes once again. I thought it's a kind of an interesting dichotomy of like openings. I like that part about it because one of his things, even the shot with his eyes, isn't like the typical shot that you saw in season one. It's more or less like there's a, there's a shot of fear in there.
<laughs> this is also inter interesting, like change in um, interesting, interesting change in tone. <laughs> I like how she went blah blah blah, but he, he like he knows, he he knew what he, he knew what he, what he what she was talking about. <laughs> Such a shifted tone. I was so confused. <laughs> Went from fucking depression to like unrequired love. <laughs> this makes like 20 minutes. Some people, some people probably say like, oh yeah, it was a good idea to actually reintroduce the whole Shibuya incident arc as like some 
slice of life show about unrequired love and shit like that and examining oneself. But my brain's just sort of like, what the fuck? <laughs> But that's it! Okay, no, it's not it. <laughs> I was confused. I was like, wait a minute, that can't be it. You can't just end it there. It's very true. It, that is a very interesting point about Yuji's character that you kind of now realize. I'm still glad season two started with the whole thing about the past, to be honest, because <laughs> this was the opening of season two. Fucking hell. <laughs> It'd be such a weird, like, reintroduction. It all just comes out of left field. <sighs> huh. I do sort of like the prior section though. It's sort of really, it's a nice exploration of Yuji's character as well. I kind of like that bit about it. It's just so out of left field because of what happened last week. A week before, a week before in, this, in this context now. Empty room, what the fuck? Damn, the boy is sus. It's a bit is a bit sussy. Can't believe it. Interesting though, I must admit. Interesting, um, interesting turn of events.
I do sort of like how they handle Makito and uh, and Geto's character. Because, don't get me wrong, they're fucking evil and pretty um, pretty bad, even though we know a bit more about Gojo's, uh, Gojo Geto's character. But they're sort of you just kind of like ordinary in, that, in a very interesting way. Well, now you just give him a stand ability, so that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> the man sort of got more. The, the man sort of got more power now. Damn, dude, got the Popeye arm. <laughs> he got the Popeye arm going on. I don't think it's a good idea to fight someone that crazy, to be honest, because every single thing you would do to him is just like, ah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool. I said cool, not cold, but thanks, translations. So we went from depression to Evangelion. <laughs> that's how that's that's that that's we went from depression to um, our required love of the anime series to Evangelion 2.0. This was this <laughs> if this is 4.4 no wait 5.0 it would just be called is if is this brackets Illegal question mark brackets. Oh no, you know, I would be it. Honestly, it's just... I gotta remember who voices Mechamaru's, Mechamaru's character, to be honest, because I swear to God, he's voiced by someone I know, and it's annoying me sli slightly. I gotta look at it a minute, I swear, isn't it the guy who voices, um... He voices, um... Oh... What's his face from, uh, from Dame on Muramasa? Uh, God, Lord. Kagaraki, that's it. I swear, I'm, I, have to go and, I have to go and Google it quickly. I swear it's him. Because it is, it'd be kind of funny. It'd be kind of on brand. <laughs> Good episode overall. I must say, it was, a, it was a two, extreme, two extremes, to be honest. I do like how loose the animation is in the season, though. It's kind of loose in a very interesting way. People are like, I don't like this level of like animation, shit like that. But I always kind of like the like more loose, 
more experimental aspects of animation. I feel like experimenting a lot with how this show looks and the, how it portrays certain events. And I kind of feel like it's be really interesting as well. Because I feel like even season two is sort of devoid of color as well. Like there's not, there's no sense. Because I mean, you can, t you can kind of tell from the way the prior episode ended that it up upholds the entire book. A bit of um, dust on my screen. It's annoying me. Um... You could tell that it is going to go into something quite major, and even the way that you saw uh, Utahime as well, it was just devoid of color. It was kind of very kind of depressing in that way. Can I set you up for the depression that is, that is lying ahead? Right, let me quickly Google. Swear is the voice by uh, Jujutsu. Can't spell. I seriously cannot spell. Uh, I just need the prior bit. Uh, where's Mal? I swear he's voiced by him. It's annoying because I swear to God I know him. He'll appear at some stage. Muta, sorry. No, I'm wrong. I could have sworn he's voiced by someone, an, another dude I remembered, but it's not. It's, it's actually Kirito. Son of a bitch. I thought it would have been kind of on brand, but it's not Kagaki's character. I was wrong. I admit when I'm wrong. And I was wrong on that, on that way. But yeah, I mean, interesting um, sort of introduction to season two, to be honest. Because... Again, it's one of those ones that it was two extremes in the way. You had the extreme of like the unrequited love section that also explored how kind of interesting and quite interest and quite cool Yushi's character actually kind of is in a way. And then you had the whole bit with Muta's character as well, and actually how he God my legs I'm dying today. And how he I mean there was points in season one it kind of did in theory hint at how he sees himself in a way. And it kind of came to a head, I guess, since in, in this episode. Interesting that he was the one that kind of didn't really sell, sell the information, but I guess there was that whole idea of the end goal to why he did it. So there, there's, there's that. And it's, it's, it is interesting that he, he then kind of had this Evangelion looking ass uh, mech kind of in the background as well, just kind of cooking for an entire, for entire, for entire lifetime in a way, or what, how, however long it took him to build it. It was very interesting. I quite liked it. I thought it was a very interesting exploration of his character as well. I mean, again, it's interesting to see where this season goes because it is this, there is hints of Shibuya mentioned constantly with Geto's character. So it'd be interesting to see how this, series, how this season progresses and where it goes towards and whether or not we actually get depression once again, which I probably imagine will be the case because the way the opening portrays it and the way the ending kind of has a sense of happiness. So you always kind of know that shit's going to get going to get fucked up pretty damn quickly. So yeah, now we're actually caught up completely with Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. We're actually now on to the most late episode tomorrow, which hopefully will happen if nothing else happens in the meantime. And yeah, I mean, season two has been great so far. I mean, again, episode five, I think is the peak of this season so far for me. I want to see whether or not we get another episode like that later on, because that was like exquisite to the T. It was, it was amazing. And I, lo I, lo I love how, this, how the season actually is progressing, actually how direction is really important as well. It's can't go understated how they portrayed the whole unquiet love section as well. That was really well done because it kind of, it kind of go, it kind of harkens back to that kind of like those series is watched as kids. The idea of like when someone loves someone else, but then whether or not they actually do actually love them completely, and that kind of like feeling the way it kind of shows it in the the scenes as well. It's very reminiscent of that kind of era of when we were, when we were kids. It's actually really well done in that way because it's not the kind of typical like you know how it kind of shows in other animes. It kind of it kind of does it in a very, very interesting way. And I kind of liked it. I thought it was actually really well done. Again, <laughs> why, did my, why did my CPU just go from 10% to minus 17,000% um, usage? That was quite, that was quite scary. It, again, if you kind of marathon this season and got to this episode, while, while I, 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 I say the words, when you saw the prior episode and watched this episode, it's like, it's a complete tonal shift. Like, absolutely slaps you in the face of a tonal shift. It's quite interesting in that way as well. And how it fits as well, which is an interesting idea as well, how it can have this tonal shift, but it doesn't really feel like it's like, what the fuck? I mean, it does feel like, what the fuck, but it doesn't really feel like... 
what are we doing here? Kind of thing. It works. I like it. So I can't wait to see what this show does do. I'm gonna lie down for a while because it's really hot in my room. I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much gonna pass out in a minute because <coughs> my it's hard to cough. My head hurts. So I feel the heat slowly um, going over me at this point. So yeah, I gotta lie down. I have now consumed more anime in one single session than I have in like two years almost. So if you actually have enjoyed this entire show as a whole on YouTube, and as always, do do a, a follow, do a like on YouTube, because it does help quite a bit. If you have then enjoyed this entire show as a whole on YouTube as well, and as always, do leave a, do leave a sub as well, helps quite a bit as well. If you have then enjoyed this entire show as a whole on YouTube, then as always, do leave a follow on Twitch. Helps quite a bit. Also, you actually will then know when, actually, you actually see these streams live, sorry. And any other, any other streams I do as well on Twitch, because I do stream every, every day on Twitch, almost every single day, I should say. We do everything and everything on Twitch now, so do come by and actually, and actually have a fun time as well. So, also do, do, leave a, do leave a follow on Twitter as well, because that's helped quite a bit also. And she will then know when the streams are live and any other streams I may do as well. So until next time, with some more Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, which will be tomorrow, hopefully. Till then, see you guys, see you guys later. Bye for now.